hoping somebody said it and I just wasn't paying attention because staff. Thanks, Seth. And then we're going to choose edit. It's already highlighted. So all you have to do at this point is hit enter. If you have data in there, you're going to need to clear it out. You highlight the list. Actually, I shouldn't say that every time. You don't have to clear them out. There are six lists you can use. So if you just want to put it in another list, you can do that and not clear the data until you've used all six. But it's a good thing for me to teach you now. If you want to clear a list, you highlight list one or whatever list, clear, enter. So then I'm going to put in all of those numbers in one list. 0, 1, stats. I have my data in list one. We leave the frequency list alone. We hit calculate. And you guys went, our minimum, if we scroll down, is zero, like Seth has for us. Q1 is three. I did see a few of you that put the mean in the middle. Wesley blames me for that one but it's the median that goes in the middle of our box plot. So that's nine. Then we have Q3 for the end of our box, which is 43. And then this tells us the max, oops, sorry, a glare. The max is 118, which is true. But remember I taught you how to use the calculator to make the box plot. So once you have your data in there, if you hit second stat plot and we go into plot one, we make sure it's on, so on should be the highlighted one. And we want to choose that fourth type. There's two types of box plots. The first one will automatically identify outliers. If there are no outliers, it'll just make a regular box plot. If you choose the fifth icon, it won't tell you if there are outliers. So don't ever use that one. There's no benefit to it. So we want to use the fourth one. Make sure it's the correct list. Frequency should say one. I get to choose the type of dots I want and the color. The older ones don't let you do that. Then I'm going to hit graph. Now it gives me some of the box plot, but not all of it. So to get the perfect window, I hit zoom and then the 9. And see how 118, yes, it's the maximum point, but it is all by itself because it is an outlier. And the end of our whisker before that is 98, which is why Seth has 98 at the end of his whisker, and then 118 over here as an outlier. Now, I hope that you guys remember I post my videos and my lessons on Canvas, so if you're struggling with the calculator work, you can always go rewatch the steps. Yay. Well, I haven't used the calculator, but I can't get onto the like, little uh, box plot. It's only letting me, I don't know if it's only on the calculator, but it's like, it's like, it's like, it's like, it's like, it's Yeah. 
The other one? What other one? The stuff to do. This is why you should have gotten the calculator a long time ago. All right. So today we're going to learn how to get standard deviation on our calculators. Um, but I did tell you guys that I would um, teach you the outlier formulas because I ran out of time at the end of last period. So, <coughs> excuse me. We already saw from Seth's box plot that 118 is an outlier. So we're going to use the data from the warm-up to show you how these formulas work. There are two types of outliers. There's low outliers and then there's high outliers. So the first formula says observation is less than Q1 minus 1.5 times the IQR. This is if we're looking for a low outlier. The other one says the observation is greater than Q3 plus one and a half times the IQR. That's for high outliers. We're going to do both, but we already saw from the warm-up in Seth's box plot, we should get no low outliers, and we should get 118 for our high outlier. So, Notice the things in the formula that we need to know. We need Q1 and the IQR. Here we need Q3 and the IQR. Seth, because I don't have the box plot on my front, will you tell us what Q1, Q3, and, the, and then I'll do the IQR part, please. Thank you. All right, so Q1 is 3, Q3 is 43. And then remember, um, last class I did talk about the IQR. The IQR is found by taking Q3 minus Q1. I'm sorry, say that again? So it is 40 in this case, yes. So we would take 43 minus 3, which like Jillian said, is 40. So we have our IQR. We have Q1, Q3. We have all the pieces we need to do our outlier formulas. 
Now this observation less than, technically we don't have to write it down each time. We just need to keep in mind that whatever number we get when we do Q1 minus one and a half times the IQR, we're looking for observations less than that. So Q1 is three, then we have minus 1.5 times the IQR, which is 40. <coughs> So when I put that into my calculator, if my fingers will work, oh, the brightness is way too high. There we go. I get negative 57. So in the data on the front side, let's flip back really quick. Did anybody have negative 57 texts sent and received? No. No. So we don't have any low outliers because we don't have any observations that are less than negative 57. So no low outliers. Then we're going to check for high outliers. So this time we use Q3, which is 43. Still one and a half times the IQR, but notice for low outliers, we were subtracting one and a half times the IQR. Now we're going to add it. So we're going to do plus 1.5 times 40. and we get 103 for that one. And this time, we're looking for observations greater than. So we're looking for any of our data that was greater than 103. And if we flip back, we had 118. And remember when Seth put his box plot up here for us, it was a dot off by itself because it was an outlier. So 118 is our outlier. So if I ask you guys in homework or on a test to use the outlier formulas, that would be those that I'm referring to. The box plot on the calculator is a great way to just automatically get those identified for you, though. Okay. Any questions on that before we talk about standard deviation? Anybody want to read for me? You just have to read the words. You don't have to read the, the formula part. Come on. I'll let him read because you read the other day. Thanks, Wesley. The standard deviation measures spread by looking at how far the observations are from the mean. The variance S2 is a set of observations. The variance S2 of a set of observations is the average of the squares of the deviations of the observations from the mean. In symbols, the variance of an end observations X1, X2, Xn is. Thank you, sir. All right. So, I put formulas out there. I don't expect you to memorize them. Okay? The AP um, exam gives you a formula sheet. But if I never told you what they meant and then suddenly you got this formula sheet, you'd be like confused out of your mind. So this, well, actually they don't give you that one. They give you the compact version. But these are both the same formula for finding variance. We don't use variance all that often. We like to work with standard deviation more, but we do need to understand the relationship. So both of those represent variance. Just like I tried to make it clear in words here, 
the variance takes your observation, so x1, x2, xn, those are all of the data that you're given, and you subtract the mean from them. Now sometimes data is higher than the mean or smaller than the mean, so we can get positive or negative answers, which is why they square it, so that we're only dealing with positive numbers. Then they add them all together, and divide by one less than the number of data pieces we have. So here, instead of <coughs> having one long fraction, they just multiplied by one over n minus one. This symbol means add everything together. So if you've never seen that before, it's the summation symbol. It means we're gonna add and we're going to add all our observations minus the mean squared. Like I said, I don't expect you to memorize this. I just want you to be familiar with it. That is for variance. Standard deviation, yes sir? Did you write slam? Sum. The standard deviation, we use the letter S for it, and it's the square root of variance because we used S squared. So the formula for standard deviation looks like that. Again, I don't expect you to have it memorized. The calculator does it for you. I just want you to be familiar with it. So if you see it in the book, or you see it on a formula sheet, you're not like, what the heck is this? She never talked about it. I try make that thing less of a, it's I not, can't think the word, that formula is not that bad, just wait till we get to geometric <laughs> variables, <laughs> in physics, AP bio, yeah. AP bio. Yeah. gotcha, um, no offense, Sorry. he makes you guys do chi-square by hand, we already did it. the calculator does it all. I teach you guys how to do it in the calculator because it's so yeah, much he easier. Just, he tells you that you need a regular calculator. Yep. Yeah. I, 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 it must be the way the AP exam for biology <laughs> is written. Yeah. He, then, then he proceeds to say, I don't even know how to work one of those. I'm like, there's no clue how to work it. So that's the only okay. It's not his job. It's my job to teach you this. The only reason why he's All right. Is it just we're going to find standard deviation. We're going back to that, the mileage. So you might have cleared some of it out. You might not have. But it's good practice to put another list in there and clear a list out. So stat, edit. Thanks, Emma. You still have them in there for me. I don't have to type any lists in. If you don't have the gas mileage in your lists, get them in there, please. City should be in list one, highway in list two. Please, and thank you.
data then you guys get to practice with highway so I'm gonna do city up here and you're gonna do highway down here so it's just like we found the average and our five number summary yesterday we're gonna hit stat but this time, instead of edit, we're going to go over to calc, and we're going to choose one bar stats. We want to work with list one right now, the city data. Leave the frequency list alone, <coughs> and then hit calculate. If you have an older calculator, when you hit one bar stats, make sure you put list one behind it so that it uses list one. All right, so yesterday I told you that we have x bar, the sum of all the x's, the sum of the x squared, and then I said there are two standard deviations in here, s sub x, and sigma sub x. Those are both standard deviations. The one we use in this class is s sub x. So it's the first one. So you hit stat, you go over to calc, one bar stats, Make sure it's using list one, so make sure it's using whatever list you have it in. And then you're looking for S sub X. <coughs> so we got, let's go at three decimals. So we got S sub X equals 10.623. Now, a big, big portion of this class is not only finding the answer, but interpreting what it means, which yes, means we have to write sentences. And sometimes I wonder how I, a math person, ended up teaching you guys how to write sentences. So, <clears throat> that being said, I am a math person. My grammar may not be perfect. You may read my sentence and be like, huh, I can say that much better than her. Please do, okay? I 
suck at English, let's just be honest. So when we interpret the standard deviation, I'm going to flip back over here. Standard deviation measures are spread by looking at how far the observations are from the mean. We're going to use that idea when we interpret, but we need to put it into context. The other part, when we look at, well, I know this is variance, but when we look at this formula, what does it look similar to? An average. So it's pretty much the average distance from the mean. So that's another part we're going to use in our interpretation. So, like I said, you may be able to wordsmith it better than me, but we're going to say something like, on average, because it is an average when we use the actual formula, <coughs> observations of city gas mileage. There's my context, because really there isn't a whole lot else to this problem. We're just looking at city mileage. On average, observations of city mileage are 10.623 away talked about the definition of standard deviation. It tells us how far away from the mean we are. It is an average because we're adding all those distances together and dividing. And then I put context in there. We're looking at the city mileage. Do you have a question, Caleb? Okay. You guys, bless you, are going to find the standard deviation for the highway data. So you're practicing how to do it in the calculator. And then I want you to write the interpretation of the highway standard deviation, please.
probably just miss I wouldn't be surprised at this point. Will you go put it on the board screen? Yep. All right. This is the board screen. Jenna is going to put the highway standard deviation and interpretation for us. Yes, sucks when we mistype a piece of data, so be really careful when you're typing your lists in. And then she put, on average, observations of highway mileage are 10.781 away from the mean. Questions? <coughs> All right, so IQR is a measure of spread. So is standard deviation. We use one measure of spread when we're using a measure of center. When we use a different measure of center, we use the different measure of spread. They kind of are partners in crime. So if we are working with the mean, something that is non-resistant to outliers, we use standard deviation for our measure of spread. They are both non-resistant to outliers. If we are using the median for our measure of center, then we use the IQR for our measure of spread. Both of those are resistant to outliers. So, if we have a distribution that is skewed or has strong outliers, we should use the median and the IQR because they're not going to be affected by the skewness or the outliers. We use the mean and standard deviation for reasonably symmetric distributions that are free of outliers. <clears throat> and I guess I should, just as a reminder, mean is x bar, standard deviation, s sub x, Me median is M, IQR is IQR. They don't have a special symbol for that. It's just IQR. Um, that idea down at the bottom. I don't. Let's go with this one. Somehow get it like cemented in your head. I will ask questions that refer to that idea 
I may not specifically ask which ones should you use for a skewed distribution, but if I give you a skewed distribution and then I say find the center and the spread, you better give me the median and the IQR. If you give me the mean and the standard deviation, you won't get the correct answer. May I flip? <laughs> All right, so who wants to read now for me? Caleb? Thank you. Caleb, you made eye contact with me when I said who on street, so it's a small little sentence. Shania, will you read please? The following data gives a summary information on the number of contacts that a sample of high school students had in their cell phones. Thank you, ma'am. All right, so we have our summary statistics. We have it broken down as male and female. So, male, N, that tells you the number of data pieces. So they got information from 20 males. They found the average. They found the standard deviation. Minimum number of contacts a male had, Q1, median, Q3, and the max. Same thing for female. They only got information from 14 females. The average standard deviation, minimum Q1, median, Q3, max. So I want you guys to take about 10 seconds and you're going to make a guess. And I put that in all capitals. It is a guess. And then we'll talk about which one actually is more symmetric, but I want to see if you guys can use some, um, what's it called in science? Educated? Hypothesis? No, not a hypothesis, but an educated guess. Oh, it's just guess? Yeah. Gosh, an educated guess. Hold on. So we are going to put some stuff here in this space. So don't write like male or female really big in that space. Just, I don't know, put a star next to which one. Based on those summary statistics, which distribution do you think is more symmetric? You're just making a guess. There is no wrong or right here. way to actually see the shape of our graph. Would it be a dot plot, a histogram, a stem plot, or a box plot? Box plot. Box plot. Why? Because it already has the min, the Q1, the median, the Q3, the max. They gave us our five number summary right there. So we can make box plots for both the male and the female data. Now, this is a technique that's called, oh man, I forgot what they call it. I think they call it stacked box plots, where you have one like right on top of each other. Um, where's my ruler? You use one number line. So we're going to make our number line. We're going to leave a little space so that we can put numbers below it. But we're going to have two box plots above it, so make sure that you give yourself quite a bit of space above it. <coughs> now, minimum, they're both pretty close to 20. 
and 300. So I'm going to go 0 to 300. I like pretty numbers. Does that mean you have to do 0 to 300? No, that's just how my brain looks at it because then I can go 100s in the middle and then 50s and then 10s. So 100 and 200, I want to put them so that hopefully I break my number line into thirds. So 100, 200. And then I'm going to put the 50s in there. So 50, 150, and 250. And then I'm going to put my four hash marks in between. Not labeling those because it's pretty obvious I'm going by tens. Four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Now, not to be stereotypical, but I'm going to use pink for female. I'm going to use blue for male. Don't hate me. It's just easiest. So, male, the minimum is at 27. My number line goes by 10, so I'm going to estimate about where 27 is. So 10, 20, it's going to be closer to 30. Don't go too far above the number line because remember we're going to stack two box plots on top of each other. Then we have 64 and a half. So here's 60, 70, so like halfway in between. 109.5, so pretty much like 110. 167 and a half. 60, 70, so closer to 170. And then 290. We're going to put our lines through the three middle dots. Don't make them too long because we need space for the other box plot. Oh man. Sorry, I made one of my, my lines in my box a little long. And that whisker is really not straight. Same thing for female, but we're going to put it above that one. So female, the minimum is 22. Now try not to make them actually touch. Put a little space in between them. And then we have 83, 60, 70, 83-ish, we'll go there, 129, so really close to 130, 180, and then 218. Lines through our three middle. <coughs> I just remembered what they call them. Sorry. They call them bear parallel. 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 I don't know where bear came from. <laughs> parallel box plots. I knew it wasn't stacked. I mean, we did stack them, but they're called parallel. So if it in the homework references parallel box plots, this is what it's talking about. And you guys were right female is much more symmetric. We have, remember, in a box plot, 25% of the data lives in that whisker, 25% lives in that part, 25 in there, and 25 in there. So these are roughly the same size for each of the 25%. So our female distribution is 
more symmetric. Oh, okay. Thank you. Now, our male distribution is less symmetric. It actually has some skewness. Is it skewed to the left or to the right? To the right. Because this really long whisker means that we have some data that's pulling it to the right. And I'm going to use a safety word. I would say slightly skewed right. Long whiskers would give us the idea that we have some skewness going on. So, using the summary statistics up here, Using the box plots, does it appear that females have more contacts in their phone? Who says yes, females have more? Who says no, the males have more? All right, Seth and Miranda and Wesley, you said female, right? Yeah. Why do you guys say female? Because the mean is higher. The mean is higher. Not only is the mean higher, but the mean is higher, and it was a smaller sample size. That was a weird why, sorry. Um, average is higher with a smaller sample size. Um, the median is also higher. If we look at our box plots, the median is that middle line of our box. So the females have a higher median. They have a higher Q1. They have a higher Q3. We just have this random guy. I'm going to tell you right now, this isn't real data, but if it was, that'd be my husband. He literally, his best friend, I don't know why, changes his number every year. And my husband will literally put Shane, 2019, Shane, 2020, Shane, 2021. I'm like, why not just update the number, or delete the number, the old number, put a new, like, why keep all the old numbers? So there are those random guys that keep every number from forever and they pull the data towards them. But the females actually have more contacts than their phones. Questions? There is an exit task. There is also like two minutes left. Homework in the book. It's on your green sheets on there. Tomorrow we will be reviewing Lindsay. Hold on. I'll be right there.